Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and these are the Tanith first and only models that I've been painting. Now the attentive folks, you will realise that there are more models in front of me here than I have painted in my series so far. That is because these at the front are the official models that came in the 2002 box of Gaunt's Ghosts models. Dorden, Larkin, Toner, Corbeck, Milo and Gaunt, as I have painted in my series so far. But these other four are conversions to match the style. These first two here are 3D prints from Thingiverse, and I'll post a link to the artist in the description. Now these two are quite happily played as generic riflemen. There's nothing particularly specific about either of them. However, you could as well play them as the Scouts, and if you really wanted to, you could play them as McCall and McVenna, for example. This one on the side here is an amalgamation of quite a few different parts. Uh, Cadian legs, catagen arms, a cloak from I actually can't remember where. Um, I did modify the arm holding the radio pack. Um, you could say that something's awry there. And finally, and most importantly, is Anna Kurth. Now this model in particular is one that I am very happy with. I got the inspiration to do Anna Kurth after I saw a piece of artwork from um, Anna Lakisova. I apologise if I mispronounce that name. Uh, she is a 2D artist that's done some of the characters of the Gaunt's Ghost series, and they were even featured in A White Dwarf, I think. And her rendition of Anna Kurth really struck me. It's just a... Uh, there are some times when you can't describe art, but it's a very good... It is a, it is, it is a good art. And upon seeing that picture, I just had to at least try to recreate that in miniature form. And so I dug around and tried to find something that was even remotely accurate. And it turns out that I actually had something that was probably close enough. So I have the Frostgrave Soldiers 2 from Frostgrave. And these are female soldiers. And in that kit, there's one of the bodies that fits a cape. Now, unfortunately, it's not a cloak, it is a cape, but close enough. Painted in the same style and no one will notice it doesn't have a hood unless you tell them. But for the colours on this model, I did try to copy the colour palette. I didn't do a particularly good job. However, I think I got it close enough that I'm pretty happy with it. And I even freehanded the medical M on her shoulder to match Dordan's. The one on Dordan is embossed from the model, but on Anna it's just freehand work. As I said in each one of the videos, I'm not doing the basing in each painting video for the model, I'm doing them at the end in a separate video. Well, uh, this is that video, so I'd better get started. And that brings me to my first step, eventually, after you're all about six hours of video so far. Um, for those of you who haven't nodded off, uh, thank you for sticking with me. And let's talk about sand. Now, a lot of people say that you shouldn't use sand on a base because it doesn't look like sand in scale. To which I reply, I'm not trying to recreate sand in scale, I'm trying to recreate gravel. However, in this case, I'm only using a little bit of sand in patches and I'll be filling the interim with a different mixture a much finer powder that I can mix up in a way that hopefully looks like mud. But what I want to do is put the sand on first so that when I put the mud texture on it will settle down and little bits of the sand will poke through. And so there they are, sanded. And you'll notice that I've just done little swirls or little lines of sand. I haven't based the entire lot. But you may also have noticed in the somewhat terrible footage of the uh, sanding process that I was gluing on some rocks and stones just to add a bit of variety. Now in some places I am hiding the slot in the base. Some places they are still visible, but we've got more steps to go, so that shouldn't be a problem. But now on to the next step. So I've got some 
baking powder that went out of date um, years ago. I'm going to mix that with some PVA and some water and some brown paint, which is going to give me the opportunity of not actually having to paint the base directly with a brush, but I'm still applying paint through this mixture. So let's get on with that and see how well that works. So some of these next sections didn't film particularly well, so I'll talk you through what I've done. On top of the dark brown that came out of my mud mixture, I put some splotches of a green and a red to give some variety. As real mud isn't a constant tone most of the time, making a scale model we want to emphasise the variety to make it seem more believable even if it's not technically realistic. Over the top of those colours I dry brushed a lighter brown to now tie it together and in some of the cases I've, I've dry brushed up onto the feet and up the leg just to kind of bring the model and the base together to show that kind of they're slogging through the mud, they're picking it up on their boots as you would in real life. And now we can add some greenery. I have some really dark two millimeter static grass and I've tried to make some grass tufts out of it, which haven't gone particularly well. And I'm gonna transfer them on and stick them on into different places. And this brings me to something that I've always found odd with the kind of shop bought grass tufts, which are usually these massive clumps and you put one of them on a base and so you have this one area of grass and then nothing anywhere else on the base and it kind of, like grass usually doesn't grow that way. So what I'm doing here is something slightly different, which is kind of also a way that grass doesn't really grow. But to break away little parts of the grass tufts that I've made and put several of them around the base, I'm trying to put as many as I can onto each base to try and make it appear natural, even if it's not technically realistic. And then mixing that in with some of the kind of official grass tufts, but this in this case, some flower tufts. Again, I'm cutting these up to make them smaller and putting several onto each base. In some cases, using more or less, uh, just to add some variety, but just trying to scatter these things around so the grass didn't go down particularly well, nor did the flower tufts. The static grass applicator that I'm using is one of those homemade things and doesn't work particularly well. The whole point of static grass is that you can make it all stand up, or at least most of it, whereas in this case it still looks a lot like it's just been trampled on in all directions. When I was cutting apart the flower tufts, it almost seems like the flower heads are glued to more than one stem, and they were just tearing apart and ending up with stems that go from a flower head just off into nothing rather than touching the base. I tried to rescue some of this at least by dry brushing a lighter green and of course this is 40k so goblin green it has to be. Now the idea of dry brushing this is that you catch the higher strands and usually the higher strands are the ones that are upright. However, while it has helped, it hasn't quite done the job that I'd hoped, unfortunately. But while I could deliberate over the grass and the flowers for the rest of time, I think I should move on to finishing off the black base rim. And by black base rim, I mean literally any colour that isn't black, because I hate black base rims. They look nasty. As these are muddy bases, having a dark brown base rim makes much more sense and it fits with the theme of the characters, and it fits with the theme of the bases. And so, there we go. All 10 of them based and ready for the battlefield. Not that they'll probably ever see a battlefield. These will be going on the shelf and admired from afar. And I'm certainly not considering buying 200 Imperial Guard models to make, um, no, 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 no. We're done, we're done, no more. Maybe one more. No more. So if you've liked me talking about these models over these seven episodes that I've painted each of them, 
I also do a podcast with Paul Allen where we talk about mini painting and such things. There will be a link in the description to episode 3 where we actually talk about these models in particular. And also a link to Instagram where I'm going to put some higher resolution pictures of some of these models. As I keep saying, I'm not an amazing painter or a fantastic model maker when it comes to the bases in particular, but the Gaunt's Ghosts models have seen such little representation uh, in the wild, I thought I'd make something for myself. If nothing else, I've at least done seven more videos for these models. So, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.